This is our second of the animal videos. This is um, about <clears throat> the kingdom of animals, but this is part two. And in this video, we're going to just focus on the phylum called Arthropoda, arthropods. Um, there's a lot to talk about, and so I just made this whole video just about arthropods. So let's first talk about some general characteristics of arthropods. They all have an exoskeleton, which means they have a skeleton on the outside, a hard outer covering that protects and gives um, the organism some structure. And because they have a an, an skeleton on the outside, as they grow, they have to molt. Molting means they have to shed their skin or shed their shell, their outer covering, as they grow because inside they're growing larger and they can't fit in there anymore. So <clears throat> unlike you, your skeleton grows with you. Um, instead, for an arthropod, their skeleton doesn't grow um, as they grow, but instead they have to grow an, a second skeleton on the inside as they're growing, and then they have to shed the outer one and have the new one underneath. That's called molting. These organisms, these animals, have a well-developed nervous system. They have brains and they have nerve uh, cords and things, and um, they have well-developed sensory systems. So you'll see they have these antenna in the front, they have eyes. Um, they have jointed appendages, so I say appendages and not legs because they have, some of them don't just have legs, some, some of them have things to swim with and um, wings as well, um, but they have joints to them, and in fact the, the word arthropod means jointed feet, and so that's where they get their name. They have segmented bodies, they have bilateral symmetry, we've, which we've talked about before, um, which means they have a left and right side, and they're circulatory system is open, meaning they don't have blood vessels. As their hearts pump the blood inside of them, it just sort of flows around in their body. It doesn't go inside little vessels, little tubes. So here are the basic characteristics of arthropods. The jointed appendages, the segmented body, and the external skeleton in both a spider and a bug. The first class I wanted to talk about of the arthropods are the arachnids, arachnida, which are the spiders, the scorpions, the ticks and mites. Actually, this is a spider. The characteristics of the arachnids are that they have two body parts, a cephalothorax and an abdomen. Those are their two body parts. They have eight legs to walk with. They have some fangs in front, which are called chelicera, they have tiny little, it looks like little bitty legs, but they're actually for feeding. They're like uh, feeding parts, almost kind of like parts of their mouth that are called pedipalps. Um, and they all have the ability to produce silk from spinnerets. And they digest externally, which means that rather than having digestive enzymes inside of their stomachs, they sort of spit up some digestive um, enzymes and then allow the digestion to happen outside of their body, and then they slurp up what's been digested. So here's your basic arachnid. This is a tarantula. You can see that it has, um, this is its cephalothorax. Let me change colors. Here's the cephalothorax, and here's the abdomen. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight walking legs. Back here are its spinnerets that produce silk. And then you see these tiny little, they almost look like little bitty baby legs. These are the pedipalps. You can't see the chelicera from here. But those are your basic characteristics of um, arthropods. I'm sorry, arachnid. In this, in this particular um, spider, you can see once again the pedipalps in front, the teeny little legs, for, which are for feeding. And then you can see the chelicera here, the fangs. Um, and then you have, of course, eyes in front. On the inside, you can see inside the arachnid, you can see it's quite complex. It's got a lot going on. Um, <clears throat> you do see the chelicera here and its mouth. You see the pedipalp in front. And then it's got a breathing apparatus called the book lung. You can see it's got a digestive tube. This is a female, so it shows an ovary. It's got sort of a large heart that's kind of one pumping organ. It does have a small brain. The next group that I wanted to talk about of the arthropods are the crustaceans, class crustacea. This includes crabs, lobsters, and even roly-polies, the pill bugs <clears throat> we talked about earlier. Most of these are aquatic. 
So they live in the water. They might be marine. Some of them live in the ocean water. They have two body parts, just like the arachnids did, the cephalothorax and the abdomen. In crustaceans, the cephalothorax is covered by um, a calcium carbonate shell called a carapace. It ha they have many paired appendages, sometimes 10 or 12 paired appendages, taking many forms. Some of them are for swimming. They have two antennae on their head, and their mouth parts are called mandibles, and they're for crushing food. So they have the ability to crush up their food with their uh, mouth. So here are some of the um, crustaceans. Here's our pill bug friend. That's a terrestrial um, crustacean. And here's a shrimp. We have a couple of different crabs here, so you can see their body parts. Lots of paired appendages here. You see the uh, antenna in the front. Um, so these are the characteristics that you notice in crustaceans. Here's a diagram of a sand shrimp. You can see all the many walking legs and swimming legs. It's got a tail even. It's got the carapace, eyes in front. And then here's a lobster. You can kind of see inside this one. Again, similar to the um, arachnid, you've got a digestive system. You've got a small brain. You've got the mouth there. Many appendages here. You've got um, digestive gland and a heart for pumping blood. Finally, the third class I wanted to talk about are the insects, class Insecta. These are the most numerous of all the arthropods, living in all kinds of environments. They live just about anywhere you could imagine there you'll find insects living. Insects are different from the other two because they have three body segments instead of two. They have a head, a separate head, with mouth parts, antenna, and eyes there. They have a thorax, which is the attachment for the legs and the wings. And they have an abdomen, which has all their internal organs. So there's there's segmentation of function even in insects. So here's a diagram of your typical insect. This is a grasshopper. You have here the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. So this here is the head. Um, even though the thorax ends right here, everything is attached to the thorax. That's for movement. So the wings are attached here. The, even these uh, big strong legs in back are these legs are and the front legs are as well. So all the legs and the wings are always attached to the thorax. And then within the, the abdomen back here is where you'll find all the um, internal organs. Mm -hmm. Here's the inside of the grasshopper. You can see that it's got a crop. That's how it digests its food. It has what's called a cerebral ganglion, which is basically like a small brain. You've got the mouth parts. You've got, again, the heart along the back like that that's pumping the blood, but remember, no blood vessels. So it pumps the blood and the blood just circulates around. Um, the malpigian tubules are the way that it um, gets rid of liquid waste, kind of like your kidneys. Um, tracheal tubes are how it breathes. It's got a nerve cord running down its belly. And that's about it. Now the other thing about insects that's special is that they undergo metamorphosis. Now, there's two kinds of metamorphosis that insects undergo. Metamorphosis, by the way, means big change. They go undergo a big change in their lifetime. If an insect undergoes complete metamorphosis, they change completely from one body form to the other. For instance, this butterfly, this is a monarch. It started out as this caterpillar, and we call that a larva. When it changes from the larva into the butterfly, it goes through a time period in its life when it is inside of this structure, which is a chrysalis. And while in the chrysalis, its body is completely reorganized. And when it emerges, it's the adult butterfly. So that's called complete metamorphosis. There's another form of metamorphosis, which is called incomplete. And in this kind of metamorphosis, there's a changing over time in the body form, but it's gradual and slow over time. So this is sort of an illustration of both of them. In complete metamorphosis, we go from egg to larva to pupa, which is the chrysalis, to adult. So you notice that the larva and the adult look very different. In incomplete metamorphosis, you have the egg, then you have the, the uh, juvenile forms, the forms that are sort of young. Um, we call them nymphs. They don't quite look like the adult, but they look similar to the adult. And then we finally have the adult form. So how you know whether it's complete or incomplete is the presence of the pupa, and also whether or not the adult and the larvae look a lot alike or whether they look very very different so that's it for insects probably my favorite animal group um, and so we'll see you later